These are the grooviest inventions from the 1970s, my favorite inventions. By the way, when did we start using the word technology for the word inventions? It, what do those two words mean against each other? I looked it up. I could not find a good answer for you, but I'm going to use the word inventions. So these weren't necessarily invented in the 1970s, but they were certainly popularized. And number one, the most favorite of all, I guarantee you, you are still using every day at home and probably at work. Number four, the push button phone. I have a very distinct memory in the 1970s of standing in front of my phone, my rotary phone, the kind where you put your finger in and spin it around, you put your finger in and you spin it around, of going, why is nothing changing? Why are there no inventions, new technology that's coming along and pushing things forward? I really felt at the time that the 70s were the most boring decade ever, and I still think that. Not much happened. I think it was kind of a just a sigh of relief that the 60s were over, that the Vietnam War was over, that uh, the hippies, the hippies kind of lost. But uh, still, it was just a it was just a refresh decade. So on the rotary phone, so all of my iGen kids who are watching, do you even know how to operate a rotary phone? So in case your grandparents ever stick you in front of a rotary phone for, phone for fun and to pull a prank on you and say, make a phone call, here's how it works. You pick up the phone. You have to listen for what's called a dial tone. Do cell phones even have dial phones anymore? Do you hear a cell phone, a dial tone at any point? I don't think we do. You listen for the, uh, it won't work unless you hear that first. Then you make the phone call by sticking your finger in the little number that you want and pulling to the right and letting go. You have to let it go all the way. Sticking your finger in, pulling all the way around, let go, all seven numbers, right? And you always hoped that you had a phone number that had like a lot of low numbers, the ones, twos, threes, and fours. If you got a new phone number when you moved, which wasn't very often, Ugh. and you had one that had zeros in it or nines or eights or sevens, you just go, oh, this is going to be so annoying. And it was annoying. Well, then the push button phone appeared and we thought, oh, this is such a time saver. Ding, 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 ding. Dial tone still first. Ding, 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 ding. Every number was the same. And there were these two little squares on the bottom that were completely unfamiliar to us that we now recognize as star and pound. We never dialed them. Had no idea what those were for. Number three, the pocket calculator. Back in the 60s, my dad worked for Burroughs Corporation, and they were the corporation that invented the adding machine. They were a big, huge name at the time. They're long gone. They were subsumed by Sperry and then into some other company, and they're just gone. But in the 60s, my dad and I would bring my brother and I to his work on the weekends where he had to tinker around. His job was repairing Addy machines, repairing any of those machines. And sometimes he had overflow work and we just he'd just bring us along and let us kind of run around the empty building with all these machines and calculators and inventions and adding machines. And my brother and I would find these calculators that uh, would we just mess around with them and multiply seven digit numbers times seven digit numbers. And it would have to sit there and think for like 20 minutes. And then my dad would get annoyed because it might be a machine he had to work on. We had to like wait for it to like stop ca calculating. And I think back then the whole idea of, you know, turn it off, turn it on, that was never a thing. You would never, oh gosh, you would never like just turn something off and turn something on. It was like hooked into some, some, did they use the word mainframe then? Well, in the 70s, in high school, here comes the pocket calculator that can do all those crazy long multiplications like that. And of course, the classic story, my physics teacher saying, you know, you're not going to have a calculator on you all the time. You need to know how to do your, do your uh, multiplication tables and your decimals and your fractions in your head. What happens if you go to the store and you want to compare prices? You know what, Mr. Walner, I think it was. I'm going to get out my pocket calculator that I have in my purse. That's what I'm going to do. Why endure? Why anybody would propose enduring the drudgery of simple math when you have a little machine right here? Number two, and you probably use one, the blow dryer. So before the invention of the blow dryer, if you want to dry hair, you sat in a little bonnet that had a tube connected to a motor that blew hot air into this big puffy thing. And it didn't really do much except dry your hair in some kind of kinked mess position, unless, unless you use curlers, which uh, if you only use curlers if you were old, uh, it really didn't work at all, for me anyway. So along comes the blow dryer in the 1970s. And here was the conundrum in the 1970s if you had long hair, which I did. Everybody had long hair. 
you would either take a shower at night and your hair would come out in the morning sort of crunchy and not the way you wanted to, or you'd take a shower in the morning and your hair would be wet. And to have your hair blow dried and beautiful and straight in the morning after a shower was an amazing luxury. So I went to eBay and looked around and said, I wonder if they have my my original, the first blow dry I ever had. And there it is, the Blue Max. This was the thing I blew dry, blew dry, blow dried my hair with all through high school. My little blue, uh, little, little blue blow, little blue blow dry hair. <laughs> So blow dryer, these days, uh, I only blow dry my hair if I'm in the mood, which is like, I don't know, pandemic. It's not very often. But number two, the blow dryer. Number one, the most glorious invention of all time that you use today in a nearly unchanged form, the microwave oven. Wow. So before the microwave oven, if you had a leftover serving of, say, my mother's chicken paprikash, and you wanted to warm that up, you had to get a saucepan, put a little water in it, and then put your goods in there and warm it up, which really just kind of more cooked it, and it kind of fell apart. It was a very sad way to eat leftover food. I think that's one reason, like, leftovers got had such a bad reputation. They just, you couldn't reheat them. Now, oh my gosh, you can reheat anything almost to the point where it seems like it's originally cooked. When it first came out, We were just fascinated by this thing. How did this work? How on earth could it like heat like a cup of water and you could pick up the cup of water and it was not hot? The plate was not hot. The food was hot and you didn't want to stand too close to it because you thought you might something, so you were like cooking your insides. You were were always kind of cautious about it. But the, the degree to which food culture changed with a microwave is you can't even imagine it. There was an original thought like, oh, let's try and cook whole chickens in here. I, I just <laughs> I just love this picture of a whole turkey sitting in a microwave. They don't they did not get it. They did not understand early on. We did not understand what microwaves, what their best use, use was going to be for, which is to reheat your food. Um, I was a nurse's aide and uh, back in the what is this? We're talking the late seventies when the microwave was really coming out. And there was a woman, kind of a queen bee employee there who made sure that she ruled the roost. And she made this big brag. She said, I made my husband go get me a microwave and we cooked with it. And I didn't like that at all. I made him take it back. (laughs) Her mistake, because I'm sure someone showed her how to use a microwave, probably her own mother. She sent her husband back to the store to get another one. Today is day 22,424. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.